Hello, in this lecture, we will answer on two questions. The first question is to find out the area of the semicircle, this semicircle that is inscribed by a quarter circle. And the second question is to find out the size of this angle, angle theta, that is the angle of the right triangle, triangle ABC. So we'll start with the first question. In the drawing, we have a quarter circle. The radius of this quarter circle is equal to three units. And inside this quarter circle, we have a semicircle that is inscribed by this quarter circle. Okay? So, we will define the center of the semicircle as point C. And I will present to you a new rule, that is rule number one. According to rule number one, A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius one to its point of tendency. I read one number one again. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its weight of tendency. So what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this circle and tangent AB, here this tangent, tangent AB, is tangent to this circle at this point, point M is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, and we have also the radius.
have the radius OM. Here the center of the circle is at point O. This point. And we have here the radius R. Here the radius OM. It is drawn to the point of tendency. That is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tendency of tangent A, B with this circle. And whenever we have a radius that, that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. That is to say tangent A, B in this case will be perpendicular to the radius M, O. So A, B is perpendicular to M, O. That is, to, that is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. I repeat again, a tangent to a circle, that is to say, tangent AB is perpendicular to the radius, perpendicular to the radius OM, that is drawn to the point of tendency, because of the fact that the, the, that the radius OM is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to the radius MO. AB is perpendicular to MO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so here we can implement one over one in our drawing because in our drawing we have here the center of the semicircle. Let's say that the center of this semicircle is at point O, not point C but point O, and from the center of this semicircle. We will draw the radius here to the point of tangency of tangent A, B with this semicircle. Let's say that the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle is at point D. So here we have the radius OD. Let's define the radius OD as R. The radius OD is drawn to the point of tendency. That is to say it is drawn to point D. That is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this semicircle, and whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, like in this drawing, then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to the radius DO. So AB is perpendicular to DO. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And from the center of the semicircle, that is to say from point O, we draw the radius to the point of tendency. So this is the radius R that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to the point of tendency. Let's say that this point is point E and this point is point F, so here the tangent BF, this, the tangent BF is tangent to this semicircle at this point, point E is the point of tendency, and we have the radius OE that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is on to point E, that is the point of tendency of tangent BF with the semicircle, and whenever we have a radius that is on to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. That is to say, BF perpendicular to EO. 
BF perpendicular to BO, that is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees, according to rule number one. And because of the fact that A, B, F is a quarter circle, point B must be the center of the quarter circle, and angle A, B, F must be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so actually, in quadrilateral D, O, B, E, we have one, two, three right angles. Okay, we have three right angles in quadrilateral A, in quadrilateral D, O, B, E. I repeat again, in quadrilateral D, O, B, E, we have three right angles. And the sum of three right angles is two, three times 90 degrees is 270 degrees. So the sum of three right angles is two, that is 270 degrees, plus the size of the fourth angle, that is actually angle D O E. In total, the sum of those four. Angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So here we subtract 270 degrees from this equation and we will get that the missing angle, angle DOE, is equal to 300. 70, 360 degrees minus 270 degrees, it is 90 degrees. So we found out that the missing angle, it is a right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. So here we can write down the angle DOE, this angle is a right angle, it is equal to 90 degrees. So, so actually, quadrilateral D O B E has four right angles, therefore, when the other D O B E must be at least a left angle if not a square. So I write it down. When the other D O B E must be at least a, a square, at least a left angle. At least the left angle is not a square. Okay, so we will relate to quadrilateral D O B E as a left angle, and we have also rule number two. According to rule number two, the opposite sides of a left angle are equal to each other. According to rule number two, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. I will repeat on rule number two again. According to rule number two, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, the opposite sides of rectangle D or B E are equal to each other, 
It means that side D O must be equal to side B. Side D O must be equal to side B E. And let's take a D O B E. But we already found out that D O it is equal to R, it is the radius of the semicircle. So D O equals to R. From this equation R equals to D O equals to D E. We will derive that BE is also equals to R. Side BE is also equals to R. So it can, here we can write down that BE equals to R, which is the radius of the semicircle also. It is equal to the radius of the semicircle in its length. Likewise, from the same reason, according to number 2, we will get that OE is equal to B to DB. OE is equal to DB. Again, OE equals to DB according to rule number two. But OE equals to R. OE equals to R is the radius of the semicircle. So from this equation, R equals to OE equals to DB, we will derive that DB is also equals to R. DB is also equals to R. So, you can write here that DB equals to R. Actually, we found that all the sides of quadrilateral DOBE are equal to each other. And all of its angles they are equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, quadrilateral DOBE is not a rectangle, but a square. Okay, quadrilateral DO B E is a square. Okay. In the next step, we will connect, we will join points O and B together by a straight line. OB is the diagonal of square DOBE. And in order to find out the length of diagonal OB, we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right grain triangle, triangle OEB. So in the right grain triangle, triangle OBE, According to the Pythagoras theorem, the green triangle OBE by PT, PT is Pythagoras theorem, information for Pythagoras theorem, we will get that the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the square to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say OB square. OB square equals to BE square plus OE square. Okay, according to the Pythagoras theorem and the right grain triangle triangle OBE, OB square equals to BE square plus OE square. So OB square. equals to BE square. BE equals to R, so BE square equals to R square plus OE square. OE equals to R, so OE square will be equal to R square. In conclusion, we found out that OB square equals to R square plus R square is 2 R square. Here we take a root out of this equation and we get that OB the length of diagonal OB is equal to square root of 2 times R. OB equals to the square root of 2 times R. 
So it just right here that the diagonal O B O B O equals to square root of two times R. In the next step we will extend diagonal B O until it touches the quarter circle at this point point S. I will repeat again that point S is the touching point of the extended diagonal BO with this quarter circle. In the next step, we will calculate the length of line segment OS. What is the length of line segment OS? The length of line segment OS will be equal to BS minus BO. Again, BS minus BO will be equal to the length of line segment OS. So we write it down. Again, the length of line segment OS, the small line segment equals to BS minus OS. What is the value of line segment BS? BS, here, B is the center of the quarter circle and S is the point of the quarter circle itself and this is exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say BS is the radius of the quarter circle that is given us that is equal to 3 units. So OS equals to BS that is 3 units minus BO. BO is the diagonal of the square. That is to say it is equal to square root of 2 times r. So in conclusion we found out that the length of line segment OS it is equal to 3 minus square root of 2 r. OS equals to 3 minus square root of 2 r. So we can write here that Line segment OS equals to 3 minus square root of 2 R. Okay. In the next step, we will complete the quarter circle to a circle. So we created a circle from the quarter circle, we completed the quarter circle to a circle, and then we will extend the diagonal OB until by a straight line until it touches the circle at this point, point M. I will repeat again, point M is the touching point of the extended diagonal BO and the circle. Okay. So what is the value of MB? The value of line segment MB? B is the center of the quarter circle. M is a point on the, on the circle itself. B is the center of the quarter circle and the center of the circle itself. And M is a point on the circle 
Therefore, MB is the radius of the circle, that is also the radius of the quarter of the circle, that is to say it is equal to 3 units. So MB equals to 3 units. So in the next step, I will present to you a new rule that is related to two cohorts that intersect with each other inside a circle. Okay? So here we have this circle and we have two cords that intersect with each other inside this circle. So the first cord is called AB and the second cord is called CD So code AB intersects with code CD at this point Point O, I'll repeat again that point O is the intersection point of of code AB with code CD. Okay? So this will be rule number three. So whenever you have two codes that intersect with each other inside a circle, like in this drawing, then the following relationship exists between their parts. Here, AO times OB, AO, AO times OB is equal to CO times OD. I'll repeat again, whenever two quotes intersect with each other inside the circle, then the following formula is true that AO times OB equals to CO times OD. So we actually can implement rule number three in our drawing. In our drawing, we have Called MS or called SM that intersects with this code will define this point as point N and will define this point as point K. So actually called NK intersects with called MS and the intersection point between called NK and MS is at point O. Okay, I will write it down. In our drawing, we have called MS or called SM, called SM, this code intersects, intersects with called NK. at point O. Point O is the intersection point of code SM with code NK. I repeat again. In our drawing, code SM intersects with code NK at point O. Point O is the intersection point between the two codes. Therefore, according to rule number three, 
we get that M O times O S M O times O S it will be equal to N O times O K. This is according to rule number three. I repeat again, according to rule number three, because of the fact that code SM intersects with code NK, we get that MO times OS equals to NO times OK. Okay, MO times OS equals to NO times OK. We have already found out that MO, M, it is actually. Here, what is the value of MO? MO equals to MB plus BO. MO equals to MB plus BO. I repeat again. Line segment MO equals to MB plus BO. And we already found out that OS equals to 3 minus cos of 2R. And it is equal to NO. What is the value of NO? Here, O is the center of the quarter circle, and N is a point on the quarter circle. O is the center of the semicircle and N is a point on the semicircle itself. Therefore, this is exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say, N O is the radius of the semicircle that is equal to R. Likewise, from the same reason, O K will be the radius of the semicircle also because it starts from the center of the semicircle that is point O and ends at point K, that is the point on the semicircle itself. That is to say, OK is the radius of this semicircle that is equal to R. So, NO equals to R, and OK also equals to R. So, in conclusion, we found out that MO times OS equals to NO times OK, that is actually equals to MO equals to MB plus BO times OS that is 3 minus square root of 2R that is equal to R times R. So MO equals to MB plus BO. MO equals to MB plus BO. MB equals to 3 units. It is the radius of the circle plus BO. BO is the length of diagonal R. Uh, of the diagonal of the square, that is to say it is equal to square root of 2 times r. Square root of 2 times r times 3 times square root of 2 times r equals to r times r, that is r squared. 3 So here we have the expression of 3 plus square root of 2r times 3 minus square root of 2r. We find the value of this expression according to the algebraic identity. It is very similar to the algebraic identity that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. We use this algebraic identity that is very similar to our expression in order to find out the value of 3 plus square root of 2r times 3 minus square root of 2r. According to this algebraic identity, we get that 
it is equal to a square minus b square. In our specific expression, a equals to 3 units and b equals to square root of 2 r. Okay? So a square, it is equal to a square minus b square. a square is 3 squared, that is 9 minus b squared. b equals to square root of 2r, so b squared is square root of 2r squared, square root of 2r squared is square root of 2, that is 2, times r squared. So in conclusion, we found out that this expression, 3 plus square root of 2r times 3 minus square root of 2r, equals to 9 minus 2r squared, and according to this equation, this side of the equation equals to this side of the equation, that is r squared. So here we will add 2r squared to this equation. And we get that 9 equals to 2r squared plus r squared is 3r squared. We will divide this equation by 3 and we get that r squared equals to 9 over 3, that is 3. We found out that r squared equals to 3. What is the uh, area of the semicircle? The area of the semicircle? First of all, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Therefore, the area of the semicircle will be half of it. That is to say, the area of this semicircle will be equal to pi r squared over 2. Pi r squared over 2. It is the area of the semicircle. So, it is pi times r squared. And we found out that r squared equals to 3, so we substitute r squared by 3 over 2. That is to say it is equal to 3 pi over 2 square units. Or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 4.71 square units. Okay? So the answer to the question is that the area of the semicircle, the area of this semicircle, it is equal to either 3 pi over 2 square units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 4.71 square units. We finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the area of this semicircle according to the second method. Okay. In the second method, we will use the things that we already found out in the first method. Here, the center of the semicircle is at po this point, point O.
and we have square O D B E And we know that the diagonal BO of the square it is equal to square root of 2 times R. R is the radius of the semicircle. We have this point is point N. And O is the radius of the semicircle, that is to say it is equal to R. OK is also the radius of the semicircle, that is equal to R. And in the next step, we will join points B and K together by a straight line. What is the length of line segment BK? I'll repeat again that B is the center of the quarter circle and K is a point on the quarter circle itself and this is exactly the definition of a radius that is to say BK is the radius of the quarter circle that is equal to 3 units so BK equals to 3 units Likewise, we will join points B and N together by a straight line. What is the length of line segment B N? I repeat again that point B is the point of the quarter circle, and N is the point on the quarter circle itself. And this is exactly, exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say, BN is the radius of the quarter circle that is equal to 3 units according to what is given us in the question. So actually, we have here, we have here isosceles triangle, triangle BNK is an isosceles triangle because side BN is equal to side BK that is equal to 3 units. And the base of the associated triangle, triangle N, BK is NK. And BO, BO is the median to the base NK. Why BO is the median? Because BO bisects the base NK into two equal parts. That is to say, NO equals to OK equals to R. OK, so I will copy the associated triangle, triangle NBK in a new page. And we will analyze the associated triangle, triangle NBK. So we have a point B.
So this is the associated sign and triangle BKN. I write it down that the associated triangle triangle BKN triangle BKN or can K and B is an isosceles triangle. And KN is the base of the associated triangle KBN. KN is the base of the associated triangle, triangle K and B. Okay, so this is the base of the triangle. And BO is the median to the base. BO is the median to the base. Okay, I repeat again. KBN is an associated triangle because KB equals to BN. The base of the associated triangle is KN. And the median to the base is BO. Why? Because it bisects the base into two equal parts, R and R. KO equals to ON equals to R. And we have a rule that is related to the median to the base of an associated triangle. This will be rule number four. According to rule number four, The median to the base in an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base. Repeat on rule number four again. According to rule number four, the median to the base in an associated triangle is perpendicular to the base. So, according to rule number four, the median BO to the base. KN in the associated triangle triangle KBN is perpendicular to the base KN. That is to say BO perpendicular to KN. Okay, I'll repeat it again. The median BO perpendicular to KN. So BO perpendicular to KN. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 4. 
And this is the implementation of four number four in our drawing. So we found out that this again equals to 90 degrees, and this again will be also equal to 90 degrees because of the fact that the median BO is perpendicular to the base KN. Okay? So in the next step, and we already know that BO or OB is the diagonal of square DOBE that is equal to square root of 2R. This is the length of the median BO. So we will focus on the right triangle, triangle KBO, and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle KBO, or KOB. Okay, so I'll copy the right triangle in a new page, and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle KBO. In this way, we will find out the value of the radius of the semicircle, that is R, and the area will be equal to pi r square over 2. Okay, so we have the right triangle, triangle KOB, the right green triangle, But here we can implement rule number four in the, in the original drawing. According to rule number four, the median BO is perpendicular to the base NK. BO perpendicular to NK. That is to say, This angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle B O N. B O N. It, it doesn't matter at all if we implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle B, O, N, or the right triangle, triangle B, O, K, because they are identical. Okay, so it will be the right triangle, triangle B, O, K, B, O, N. Okay, it will be the right triangle. So here it, it was the right triangle, triangle B, O, K. So we will implement it on this right triangle, triangle B, OK. The right green triangle, triangle B, OK. We know that KO equals to R, it is the radius of the semicircle. BO is the diagonal of the square that is square root of 2 R. And KB or BK, it is the radius of the quarter circle that is equal to 3 units. So this is the right triangle, triangle BOK. We will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle BOK. According to the Pythagoras theorem, by PT, the abbreviation for Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendicular mass. The square of the hypotenuse is KB square, and it is equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendicular mass. That is to say, it is equal to BO square plus KO square.
kb equals to 3 units, therefore kb squared is 3 squared, that is 9, and it is equal to bo squared. bo equals to square root of 2r, and square root of 2r squared is square root of 2, that is 2, times r squared, plus ko squared. ko is r, so ko squared is r squared. So we found out that 9 equals to 2 r squared plus r squared is 3 r squared. We will divide this equation by 3 and we will get that r squared equals to 3. And the area of the semicircle it is equal to pi r squared over 2. That is to say it is equal to pi and r squared is 3 over 2. That is to say it is 3 pi over 2 square units. Or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 4.71 square units. Okay? So we found out in the second method also that the area of the semicircle equals to the 3 pi over 2 square units. So in terms of numbers, it is equal to 4.71 square units. Okay, the area of this semicircle equals to either 3 pi over 2 square units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 4.71 square units. We finished with the first question. In the next step, I will present to you the second question. the question, in the second uh, question, we have in the drawing the right triangle, triangle ABC. Angle ABC, this again equals to 90 degrees. DE is perpendicular to the hypotenuse AC, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. And we also know that uh, line segment AE equals to EC. Here, AE equals to EC. AE equals to EC. We also know that line segment DE equals to 2 units, and side BC of the right triangle ABC equals to 6 units. And we want to find out the value of this angle, angle BAC, that is equal to theta. Okay? And we will find out the size of this angle, angle theta, in two different methods. So, we will start with the first method. In the first method, we will do a construction from point E. We will do perpendicular on BC. So, this angle equals to 90 degrees according to all construction, and this angle will also equal to 90 degrees according to all construction. We we'll define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC as F. We will define angle ACB as alpha. But because of the fact that in the right triangle ABC, it is given us that angle BAC equals to theta, then angle ACB must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle ABC to 180 degrees. In this way, we get that here 90 degrees minus theta plus theta is 90 degrees, and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. That is the reason that this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So in conclusion, we actually found out here that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta.
we will add theta to this equation and we will subtract alpha and we get that theta equals to 19 degrees minus alpha. Okay. If we focus on the right angle FEC, on the right angle FEC, <coughs> because of the fact that this angle equals to alpha, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right small triangles FEC to 180 degrees. But here, 90 degrees minus alpha, it is theta. So we can substitute 90 degrees minus alpha by theta, it is equal to theta. And what is the size of angle DEF? The size of this angle? The size of angle DEF? It will be equal to the size of angle DEC, the big angle DEC, minus the size of this angle, that is actually angle FEC. I will repeat again, the size of this angle, angle DEF, equals to the size of angle DEC, the big angle DEC, minus angle FEC. It is very easy to see it from the drawing that the size of DEC minus the size of AFEC, FEC, equals to the size of the missing angle, angle DEF. So, and angle DEC equals to 90 degrees according to what is given us in the question. And FEC, we just right now found out that FEC equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. So we substitute angle FEC by 90 degrees minus alpha. We will open the brackets here and we get that the missing angle, angle DEF equals to 90 degrees minus 90 degrees, that is zero, and minus, minus is plus plus alpha. So in conclusion we found out that the missing angle angle DEF equals to alpha. So we can write here that this angle equals to alpha. So if you focus on the right triangle triangle DEF, in the right triangle DEF this angle equals to alpha. This angle equals to 90 degrees. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle DEF to 180 degrees. But 90 degrees minus alpha, it is theta. So we can substitute 90 degrees minus alpha here by theta. We we'll do it and we we'll get that this angle that is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha, it is actually equal to theta. Okay? So, in the next step, in the next step, we will prove that the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangles, triangle EFC. This I right, small triangle, triangle EFC. So why those two right triangles are similar to each other? We have the right triangle, triangle ABC, the right big triangle. Before we will prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other, 
we will define side DF as X, we will define side EF as Y, and we will define AE as A. If AE equals to A, and it is given us the question that A equals to EC, then EC must be also equal to A, because they are equal to each other. So, why those two right angles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles they are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. So, angle BAC of the big right triangle, triangle ABC, is equal to this angle, this is actually angle FEC. And both those two angles are equal to theta. I repeat again, angle BAC in triangle ABC equals to angle FEC in triangle EFC, and both angles are equal to theta. In addition, those two angles, they are both right angles, that is to say they are equal to each other. So angle ABC in the right big triangle ABC is equal to this angle that is actual angle EFC. And both angles are equal to 90 degrees. I repeat again. Angle ABC in the right wing triangle ABC is equal to angle EFC in the right triangle FEC. And both angles are, and angles are equal to 90 degrees. Finally, we have this angle that is a common angle. It belongs to both triangles. It is very easy to see that this angle, angle alpha, belongs to the big right triangle, triangle ABC, and this angle this also belongs to the small right triangle, triangle EFC. So we can write down that angle ACB, it is actually, uh, we can say that this angle equals to itself. Okay, angle alpha equals to angle alpha. So angle ACB, is equal to angle ECF it is equal to alpha and this is actually a common angle actually we are always talking about angle alpha and I presented to I presented angle alpha in two different uh, methods in order to emphasize that angle alpha is, is belongs to angle to triangle ABC but angle alpha belongs also to triangle EFC. So in conclusion angle ACB equals to angle ECF that is equal to alpha it is a common angle that belongs to both triangles. So we actually proved that all the angles of triangle ABC can work correspondingly to all the angles of triangle EFC. Those two angles are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. Those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees. And this angle is a common angle that belongs to both triangles. Therefore, we proved that the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle EFC. I write it down. Tri the right big triangle, triangle ABC. is similar, this is the sign of similar, to the right small triangle, triangle EFC, and they are similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact 
that those two right triangles are similar to each other, we will derive M's that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will derive that AB over AC in the right triangle, triangle ABC, is equal to EF over EC in the right small triangle EFC. I'll repeat again, from the fact that triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC, we will conclude that AB over AC in the right triangle ABC is equal to EF over EC in the right triangle EFC. So according to equation number one, AB over EC. What is the length of EC? EC equals to A plus A, that is 2A, according to our definition. So we will substitute AC by 2A, and it is equal to EF. EF equals to Y, according to our definition, over EC. EC equals to A, also according to our definition. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number one, a b over two a equals to y over a. Here we have a on both sides of the equation number one, so a will get cancelled, and we will get after we cancel a, we have a b over two that is equal to y. Here we will multiply this equation, equation number one, by two. And we'll get that AB equals to 2Y. AB equals to 2Y. So we can write here that AB equals to 2Y. In the next step, we will prove that the right small triangle, triangle EDC, is similar to the right big triangle, triangle ABC. So we will focus on the right big triangle, triangle ABC. And in the right small triangle, this triangle, triangle EDF. We will prove that those two right triangles are similar to each other. Why those two right triangles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles, they are equal to each other, they are both equal to alpha. So you can write down that angle ACB in triangle ABC is equal to angle DEF in triangle EDF. And both those two angles are equal to alpha. I repeat again. Angle ACB in triangle ABC is equal to angle DF in triangle DDF. And both angles are equal to alpha. In addition, we have those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees. So angle ABC, in triangle ABC, is equal to angle EFD, in triangle EDF, and both angles are equal to 90 degrees. Again, angle ABC in triangle ABC equals to angle EDF. In triangle EFD, and both angles are equal to 90 degrees. And finally, we have 
Dos to Eges, the equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. Okay? So angle BAC This angle is equal to this angle, angle EDF. And both angles are equal to theta. I'll repeat again. Angle BAC and triangle ABC equals to angle EDF and triangle EDF. And both angles are equal to theta. So we prove that all the angles in triangle ABC can go into all the angles in triangle EDF. Those two angles they are both equal to theta. Those two angles they are both equal to alpha. And those two angles they are both equal to 90 degrees. So we proved that the right big triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle EDF, according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those two right triangles are similar to each other, we will derive as we will derive that AB over BC in the right triangle ABC. A, B over B, C is equal to D, F over E, F. D, F over E, F. I'll repeat again. We derive that A, B over B, C in triangle B, C equals to D, F over E, F in triangle D, F. So here, we have an equation number 2, AB, AB equals to 2Y, over BC, BC equals to 6 units according to what is given as the question, and it is equal to DF that is X, over EF that is Y. So, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 2, 2y over 6 equals 2x over y. Here we divide both the numerator and the denominator of this side of equation number 2 by 2, and we get that 2y over 2 is y, and 6 over 2 is 3. So we got that y over 3 equals to x over y. Here we of course multiply this equation, equation number 2, and we get that according to equation number 2, y squared equals to 3x. So if we know that according to equation number 2, y squared equals to 3x, if we focus on the right triangle, triangle DEF, on the right triangle, triangle DEF, according to the Pythagoras theorem by PT, this will be equation number 3, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say, x squared plus y squared equals to 2 squared, x squared plus y squared equals to 2 squared, that is 4, I'll repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle DF, we're going to the Pythagoras theorem, x squared plus y squared equals to 4. But we're going to equation number 2, we have already found out that y squared equals to 3x. That is to say, we can substitute y squared in equation number 3 by 3x, because y squared equals to 3x. We'll do it now, and we'll get that 
x square plus y square that is 3x if only to equation number 2 it is equal to 4. So here we subtract 4 from this equation, equation number 3, and we get that only to equation number 3, x square plus 3x minus 4 equals to 0. So we have here a quadratic equation. And the general form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here, in this general formula, a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for. And we find out the value of x according to the following formula. x, it is actually equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times ac over 2a. Okay. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to 1. Here, yeah. the coefficient a equals to 1. The coefficient b equals to 3. And the coefficient c equals to minus 4. And the variable that we are looking for is x. So we put the data inside the formula for x and we find out the value of the values of x. According to this formula, x equals to minus b. b is 3, so minus b is minus 3, plus minus square root of b square, b is 3, so b square is 3 square, that is 9, minus 4 times a is 1, and c is minus 4, over 2a, a is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2, so we got that x equals to minus 3 plus minus square root of minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16 plus 16 plus 9 16 plus 9 is 25 so inside the root we left only with 25 over 2 the square root of 25 is 5 so we got that x equals to minus 3 plus minus so out of 25 is 5 over 2. So here we will have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution for x is x1. It is equal to minus 3 minus 5 over 2. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Minus 8 over 2 is minus 4. So we found out that x1 equals to minus 4. But here, because of the fact that x is equal to the length of side df of the right triangle EDF, so x is a length. Because of the fact that x is a length, it must be a positive number. Therefore, f, x can never be equal to minus 4, that is a negative number. So we cancel this solution, and we left with the, only with the second solution, x2, that is equal to minus 3 plus 5 over 2. Minus 3 plus 5 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. So we found out that x2 equals to 1. So in the next step, I will copy the right triangle, triangle DEF in a new page and we will implement the pattern uh, we will uh, find out the cosine of theta in the right triangle DEF ok
we have already found out that x equals to 1, x equals to 1, and it is given as the equation that d equals to 2. So this is the high triangle DF that I copied from the original domain. And here, in the right triangle, triangle DEF, we get, this is angle theta, of course. We get that cosine theta equals to DF over DE. So cosine theta equals to DF, that is 1, over DE, that is 2. So hold on that cosine theta equals to 1 over 2. And if cosine theta equals to 1 over 2, it means that theta itself equals to 60 degrees. Okay? So we found out that the missing angle, the angle that we are looking for, theta, it is equal to 60 degrees, and this is, that is the answer to the question. That angle theta equals to 60 degrees. Okay, we finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the size of angle theta according to the second method. In the second method, uh, we define side A, E, S, A, as we did in the first method. E, C will be also equal to A. And we define this angle as angle alpha, as we did in the first method. We already found out that this angle it is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So we, fo we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. I will copy the right triangle ABC in a new page and we will analyze the right triangle, triangle ABC. It is given as the question that BC equals to 6 units and the hypotenuse AC equals to A plus A, that is 2A, according to our definition. So this is the right triangle, triangle ABC that I copied from the original drawing. Here, cosine alpha equals to BC over AC. BC equals to 6 units. It is given as the question that AC equals to 2A according to our definition. So, in conclusion, we found out that. Cosine alpha equals to 6 over 2a. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator of this side of the equation by 2. 6 over 2 is 3 and 2 over 2 is 1. So in conclusion, we found out that cosine alpha, this will be equation number 1. According to equation number 1, cosine alpha equals to 3 over a. We will multiply this equation, equation number 1, by A, and then we will divide it by cosine alpha. 
and we get that according to equation number one, a equals to three over cosine alpha. a equals to three over cosine alpha. In the next step, we will focus on the right small triangle, triangle DEC. I will copy the right small triangle DEC in the new page and we will analyze the right triangle, triangle DEC. Okay. Here, here. So this is the right triangle, triangle D C. In this right triangle, triangle D C, we know that tangent alpha equals to D E over E C. D E equals to 2 and E C equals to A according to our definition. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 2, Daniels alpha equals to 2 over A. But according to equation number 1, we have already found out that a equals to 3 over cosine alpha. Now we can substitute A in equation number 2 by 3 over cosine alpha because A equals to 3 over cosine alpha according to this equation, equation number 1. We will do it now and we will get the tangent alpha equals to 3 and A equals to, equals to 2 of course. Tangent alpha equals to 2 over a and a going into equation number one it is equal to three over cosine, cosine alpha so we substituted a by three over cosine alpha and we get here that according to equation number two tangent alpha equals to 2 times cosine alpha over 3. We know that tangent alpha is equal to sine of alpha over cosine alpha, so we'll substitute tangent alpha in equation number 2 here by sine of alpha over cosine alpha. We'll do it now and we get the tangent alpha is equal to sine of alpha over cosine alpha and it is equal to 2 times cosine alpha over 3. Here we will cross multiply this equation, equation number 2 and we get that according to equation number 2 3 times sine alpha equals to 2 times cosine square alpha. We have the trigonometric identity that sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals to 1 here we we'll subtract sine square alpha from this trigonometric identity and we will get that cosine square alpha equals to 1 minus sine square alpha. Now we can substitute 
cosine square alpha in equation, in equation number 2 by 1 minus sine square alpha from the hermeneutic identity. We will do it now and we will get that the coordinate to equation number 2 according to equation number 2 3 times sine alpha equals to 2 times cosine square alpha but we have already found out that according to the trigonometric identity, cosine square alpha equals to 1 minus sinus square alpha. Here we'll open the brackets on this side of the equation number 2, and we we'll get that according to equation number 2, sine alpha equals to 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 1 sine square alpha equals to minus 2 times sine square alpha here we will add 2 sine square alpha to this equation equation number 2 and we get that they go into equation number 2 2 sine square alpha plus 3 sine alpha equals to 2. Here we will subtract 2 from this equation, equation number 2. And we will get that 2 sine according to equation number 2. 2 sine square alpha plus 3 sine alpha minus 2 equals to 0. So here we have a quadratic equation and the solution to the quadratic equation is x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times ac over 2a now a specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to 2, the coefficient b equals to 3, and the coefficient c equals to minus 2. And the variable that we are looking for is sinus alpha, so x equals to sinus alpha. So we put the data inside the formula for x and we will find out the value of the values of sinus alpha because x equals to sinus alpha. So we get that sinus alpha equals to minus b, b equals to 3, so minus b is minus 3, plus minus square root of b squared, b is 3, so b squared is 3 squared, that is 9, minus 4 times a is 2, times c is minus 2, over 2a. a is 2, so 2a is 2 times 2, that is 4. So here we get that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus minus. Inside the root we have minus 4 times 2 is minus 8. Minus 8 times minus 2 is plus 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. So inside the root we left only with 25 over 4. So here we get that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus minus square root of 25 is 5 over 4. So here we will have two solutions that are possible for sinus alpha. The first solution is sinus alpha equals to minus 3 minus 5 over 4. 
minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8, minus 8 over 4 is minus 2. So we found out that according to the first solution, sinus alpha equals to minus 2. Sinus alpha equals to minus 2. But because of the fact that the range of values that the function sinus can accept, the range of values that sinus, the function sinus can accept is from minus 1 to plus 1. And minus 2 exceeds, exceeds this range. That is to say, sinus alpha can never be equal to minus 2. So we we'll cancel this solution, and we left only with the second solution that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus 5 over 4. Minus 3 plus 5 is 2, and 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. So in conclusion, we found out that sinus alpha equals to 1 over 2 and if sinus alpha equals to 1 over 2 it means that alpha itself equals to 30 degrees and we have already found out that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta Here we'll substitute alpha by 30 degrees because alpha equals to 30 degrees and we get that 30 degrees equals to 90 degrees minus theta. Here we will add to this equation theta and we will subtract 90 degrees and we get that theta equals to 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, it is 60 degrees. So we found out that the angle that we are looking for, angle theta, equals to 60 degrees and this is that is the this is the answer to the question that is to say again theta equals to 60 degrees we finished with the second method in the next step i will summarize the lecture okay we we'll start with the first question in this question we have a semicircle that is inscribed by a quarter circle. We know that the radius of the quarter circle is equal to 3 units. And we want to find out the area of the semicircle that is inscribed by the quarter circle. We defined the center of the semicircle as point O. And then I presented to you rule number 1. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So if we have this circle and the center of this circle is at point O, and we have the tangent AB, tangent AB is tangent to this circle at point M, point M is the point of tendency, then we have the radius OM, that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, and whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then according to rule number one, the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. That is, that is to say tangent AB in this case will be perpendicular to the radius MO. AB is perpendicular to MO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. 
Okay, so we can implement rule number one in our drawing. Because here in our drawing, from the center of the semicircle that is at point O, we draw the radius to point D, that is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this semicircle. And whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. That is to say, in this case, tangent AB will be perpendicular to the radius DO. AB is perpendicular to DO, that is to say, this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees, according to rule number one. Likewise, from point O, that is the center of the semicircle, we draw, we, uh, we draw the radius OE. The radius OE, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point E, that is the point of tendency of tendency BF with this semicircle, and whenever we have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. In this case, tangent BF will be perpendicular to the radius EO. BF perpendicular to EO, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. And we also know that uh, the quarter circle ABF, uh, that ABF is a quarter circle, therefore B is the center, of the quarter circle and angle ABF must be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, in any, in any quarter circle, here angle ABF or this angle will be equal to 90 degrees. So inside quadrilateral DOBE, we have three right angles one, two, three. And the sum of those three right angles is 270 degrees plus the size of the fourth angle, that is angle. D, O, E, in total they must be equal to 360 degrees. So here, the sum of three right angles is 90 times 3 is 270 degrees, plus the size of the fourth angle, that is angle D, O, E, in total they must be equal to 360 degrees. Here we subtracted 270, according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. We subtracted 270 degrees from this equation, and we found out that the missing angle, angle DOE, equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Okay, so the missing angle here is equal to 90 degrees, therefore quadrilateral DOBE, we have four right angles. And we have the rule that any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. So quadrilateral DOBE that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. So we will relate to quadrilateral DOBE as a rectangle. And we have rule number two, according to rule number two, the opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, the opposite sides of rectangle DOBE are equal to each other. It means that DO equals to BE. We're going to rule number two. Side DO must be equal to side DE. This is according to rule number two. That the opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. But we have already found out that DO equals to R, which is the radius of the semicircle. DO equals to R, so from this equation R equals to DO equals to BE, we will derive that BE is also equals to R. Here, side BE is also equals to R. Likewise, according to rule number 2, OE must be equal to DB. OE must be equal to db according to rule number two, the opposite sides of left again are equal to each other. But here, we have only found out that O equals to R, it is the radius of the semicircle. Here O equals to R, so from this equation R equals to O e equals to O B, we will derive that O B is also equals to R. So we found out here that O 
be here we found uh, we found out actually that it is actually O E equals to D B O E equals to D B according to rule number two but O E equals to R O E equals to R so from this equation R equals to O E equals to D B we will derive that D B is also equals to R here D B is also equals to R therefore we found out that in quadrilateral D O B E we have four equal sides they are all equal to R and uh, so quadrilateral D O B E has four equal sides and also four right angles therefore quadrilateral D O B E is not a rectangle but a square so in conclusion we found out that quadrilateral D O B E is a square and then we join points B and O together by a straight line. B O is the diagonal of square D O B E. And we found out that the length of diagonal B O by implementing the Pythagoras theorem on the right grain triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say B O square equals to O E square plus B E square. In the right triangle, triangle OBE, OB square equals to BE square plus DE square. OB square is OB square, the missing line segment is the number of the square. BE equals to R, so BE square equals to R square. BE square equals to R. OE also equals to R. So OE square will be equal to R square. O is square equals to R square, which is actually D is square equals to R square. So in conclusion, we found out that O B square equals to R square plus R square. R square plus R square is two R square. So in conclusion, we found out that O B square equals to two R square. We took a out of this equation and we found out that the diagonal O B of the square it is equal to the square root of two R. If the diagonal O B equals to square root of 2R. Then we found out the size, we extended diagonal BO until it touches the quarter circle at this point, point S. And we found out the size of line segment OS. What is the size of line segment OS? From the drawing, it is very easy to see that OS equals to BS minus BO. Again, BS minus B O equals exactly to line segment O S. Okay, O S equals to B S minus B O. B S, what is the size of B S? B is the center of the quarter circle and S is the point of the quarter circle itself. And this is exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say B S is the radius of the quarter circle that is equal to three units according to what is given us in the question. So B S equals to three units BS equals to 3 units, and we have already found out that BO, the diagonal of the square, equals to the square root of 2 times R. Okay, so in conclusion, we found out that OS that is equal to BS minus BO, it is equal to BS that is 3 minus BO, that is square root of 2R. In conclusion, OS equals to 3 minus square root of 2R. Then, we completed the quarter circle to a circle. And from the center of the circle, that is to say from point B, we, uh, we extended the uh, diagonal BO by a straight line until it touches the circle at this point. Point M is the touching point of the extended BO and the circle. So we got here line segment MB. What is the size of line segment MB? We know that B is the center of the circle. M is the point of the circle itself. And this is exactly the definition of a radius. Any line segment that starts from the center of the circle and ends at any point on the circle itself must be the radius of that circle. That is to say MB is the radius of, is the radius of this circle. That is to say it is equal to 3 units. So we found out that MB equals to 3 units. 
then I presented to you a new law, a new rule that is related to two courts that intersect with each other. This is, this is rule number three. Whenever we have two courts that intersect with each other, like in this drawing, we have court A, B that intersects with court C, D at point O. Point O is the, is the intersection point of court A, B with court C, D. Then the following relationship exists between uh, the parts of the two courts. Here, according to rule number three, a O times O B equals to C O times O D again. M A O times O B equals to C O times O D. Therefore, we can implement rule number three in our drawing. Why? Right? Because in our drawing, we have code M S that intersects with code M N K at point O. I repeat again, code MS or code SM intersects with code NK at point O. Point O is the intersection point of the two codes. Therefore, we can implement rule number three in our domain. According to rule number three, we get that MO times OS equals to NO times OK. Okay, here. We know that code SM intersects with code NK at point O. Point O is the intersection point, therefore we can implement rule number four according, rule number three according to rule number three. MO times OS equals to NO times OK. So what is the size of MO? It, it is very easy from, to see from the domain that NO equals to MB plus BO. Again, MB plus BO equals to MO. Okay, MO equals to MB plus BO. And OS, we have already found out that OS, the small line segment equals to 3 minus square root of 2R. So we substitute OS by 3 minus square root of 2R. And it is equal to NO times OK. NO equals 2R and OK also equals 2R. Therefore, NO times OK equals 2R times R. That is R square. And we know that MB equals to 3 units and BO equals to square root of 2 R. So in conclusion, MO will be equal to 3, pi, uh, 3 plus square root of 2 R. In conclusion, MB plus BO, that is MO equals to 3 plus square root of 2 R times OS, that is 3 minus square root of 2 R equals to R times R, that is, that is R squared. So here, this expression is very similar to the algebraic identity that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. In our specific uh, expression, a equals to 3 and b equals to square root of 2r. So, and this expression equals to a square minus b square according to this geometric identity. So our specific expression will be equal to a square minus b square a is 3, so a squared is 3 squared, that is 9, minus b squared. b is square root of 2r, so minus b squared is minus square root of 2r, minus square root of 2r is minus square root of 2, that is 2, times r squared. So in conclusion, we found out that this expression equals to 9 minus 2r squared, and it is equal to r squared. Here we added 2 r squared to this equation and we found out that 2 r squared plus r squared is 3 r squared and 3 r squared is 9. We divided this equation by 3 and we got that r squared equals to 3. And what is the area of the semicircle? The area of the semicircle equals to the area of the circle that is pi r squared over 2. So the area of the semicircle equals to pi r squared over 2. So it is pi and r squared. We already found out that r squared equals to 3 and over 2. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to either 3 pi over 2 square units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to equals to 3.71 square units. We finished with the first method. In the next step, we present to you how we found out the area of the 
A sve mislim u tijel, u tom je kod desekad metoda. In desekad metod, we would, we would, all the things that we already found out in the first method, we already found out that D, O, B, E is a square, and the N, O is the radius of the semicircle, and O, K is also the radius of the semicircle, and here, we join points B and K together by a straight line. What is the length of line segment BK? B is the center of the quarter circle. K is the point on the quarter circle itself. And this is exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say, BK is the radius of the quarter circle that is equal to 3 units according to what is given us in the question. For the same reason, BN will be also the radius of the semicircle that is equal to 3 units, why? Right? Because it starts from the center of the quarter circle and that's at point N, that is a point on the quarter circle itself, therefore it is the radius of the quarter circle that is also, that is actually equals to 3 units. So we have the green triangle, triangle NBK is a right, uh, is a isosceles triangle, why? Because N, BN equals to BK. He has two sides that are equal to each other, therefore it is an associated triangle. In this associated triangle, triangle NBK, NK is the base. NK is the base of the associated triangle. So here I copied the, uh, the associated triangle, triangle B and K in a new page. This is the associated triangle, triangle and BK. Here we know that BO is the diagonal of the square that is equal to square root of 2R, but BO is also the median to the base KN. KN is the base of the associated triangle K, KBN, and BO is the median to the base. Why BO is the median to the base? Because it's by itself the base. KN into two equal parts, R and R. So we have here the median to the base KN that is bisect the base into two equal parts, but according to rule number one, it is not only bisect the base into two equal parts, but it is also perpendicular to the base. That is to say, according to rule number four, the median to the base in an associated triangle is perpendicular to the base. That is to say, the median BO is perpendicular to the base KN. Again, BO is perpendicular to KN. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 4. So here, in the original drawing, we can say that the median BO is perpendicular to the base NK, that is to say this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number 4. So we can implement now the Pythagoras theorem on each part of uh, the, uh, the isosceles triangle that is divided to two parts. The isosceles triangle divides, divides to two parts to the right triangle, triangle BON, and also to the right triangle, triangle BOK. So we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle BKO. We know that BK, the cotinus, equals to 3 units. We have already found out that BO, which is the diagonal of the square that is square root of 2 times R in its length, and KO equals to the radius of the semicircle that is R. So I copied the right triangle, triangle BKO in a new page and we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right red triangle, triangle BOK. Again, BO equals to square root of 2 ohm, BK equals to this radius of the quarter circle that is equal to 3 
Okay, it is the radius of the semicircle that is equal to r. So here, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, b k square equals to b o square plus k o square. b k equals to three. b k square is three square. That is nine plus b d square plus b o square. B O is square root of 2R. So B O square is two, square root of 2R square. Square root of 2R square is square root of 2, that is 2, times R square. In conclusion, square root of 2R square, it is 2R square, plus O K square. O K is R, so O K square is R square. So in conclusion, we found out that 9 equals to 2R square plus R square. 2R square plus R square is 3R square. So 9 equals to 3 R square, we divided this equation by 3, and we got that R square equals to 3. The area of the semicircle, it is pi R square over 2. So it is pi and R square is 3, so we substituted R square by 3, and we divided it by 2. In conclusion, we found out that the area of the semicircle equals to either 3 pi over 2 square units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 3.71 square units. We finish with the first question. In the next step, I will present to you how we solve the second question. In the second question, we have the right triangle, triangle ABC, and we know that Angle ABC equals to 90 degrees. So we have the right triangle, triangle ABC, angle ABC equals 90 degrees. And here, line segment DE is perpendicular to the hypotenuse AC. That is to say, this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle also equals 90 degrees. And we also know that AE is equal to EC. Side BC of triangle ABC equals to 6 units. And we have angle BAC that is equal to theta, that is the angle that we are looking for. Okay, so in the first step, in order to find out the size of angle theta, we made the construction from point E, we drew perpendicular on BC, so this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees according to our construction, and we define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC as F. So, and then we define angle ACB as alpha. Okay? But because of the fact that in the right triangle ABC, this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle equals to theta, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta, in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle ABC to 180 degrees. In conclusion, because of the fact that according to our definition, this angle equals to alpha, and we already found out that this angle also equals to 90 degrees minus alpha, we can conclude that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta. We, sub we added theta to this equation and we subtracted it 90 degrees, and we found out that theta equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. Then we found out the size of this angle, angle DEF. 
But before that, we have in triangle, the right triangle FEC, this angle equals to alpha, this angle equals to 90 degrees, so this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle FEC to 180 degrees. So this angle equals to 90 degrees minus alpha, but 90 degrees minus alpha equals to theta. So you can write down that here, 90 degrees minus alpha equals to theta. Then we found out the size of angle DEF, the size of this angle. The size of this angle DEF must be equal to the size of the big angle, angle DEC, minus the size of this angle, this is angle DFEC. Again, DEC, the big angle, minus FEC, will be equal to this angle, this is angle DEF. I will repeat again. The size of angle of angle DEF equals to the size of the, the big angle, angle DEC, minus the size of angle FEC. It is given us the question that the size of angle DEC equals to 90 degrees, and we already found out that, that the size of angle FEC equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. Again, the big angle DEC equals to 90 degrees, and angle FEC equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. We opened the bucket here and we found out that angle DEF equals to 90 degrees minus 90 degrees, that is zero, and minus and minus is plus, so here we have alpha. So we found out that angle DEF equals to alpha, the missing angle here equals to alpha, so in the right triangle DEF, if this angle equals to alpha, this angle equals to 90 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle DEF to 180 degrees. Okay, so this angle, angle uh, EDF equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. But because of the fact that 90 degrees minus alpha equals to theta, we can substitute 90 degrees minus alpha here by theta. We did it. Therefore, this angle equals to theta. Okay. Then we define side DF as X. We define side FE as Y. We defined A, E as A, and E, C will be also equal to A because of the fact that A, E equals to E, C according to what is given us in the question. Then we uh, proved that the right big triangle A, B, C is similar to the right small triangle F, E, C. Why those two right triangles are similar to each other? First of all, we have those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. In addition, we have those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. And finally, we have this angle that is a common angle, it belongs both to the right big triangle, triangle ABC, this angle also belongs to the small triangle FEC. Therefore, we prove that all the angles in triangle ABC can go into all the angles of triangle EFC, and therefore we proved that the right big triangle, triangle ABC is similar to the small right triangle EFC only to angle 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those two right triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over AC in the right triangle ABC is equal to FE over AC in the right triangle FEC. I repeat again, here AB over AC in the right triangle ABC equals to EF over AC in the right triangle EFC. So AB is AB, AC is A plus A, that is 2A, AC is 2A, and EF is Y according to our definition, and EC is A also according to our definition. EC is A, so in conclusion we found out that AB over 2A equals to Y over A. Here we have A on both sides of equation number one, so A will get cancelled, and we left only with A, B over two, that is equal to Y. We multiply the equation number one by two, and we got that A, B equals to two Y. So here we can write down that A, B equals to two Y. In the next step, we proved that the right small triangle, triangle D, F, is similar to the right big triangle, triangle A, B, C. Why those two? Right triangles are similar to each other. First of all, those two angles that are equal to each other are both equal to theta. Those two angles that are also equal to each other they are both equal to alpha. And those two angles that are also equal to each other they are both equal to 90 degrees. 
So all the angles of triangle ABC can go to all the angles of triangle DEF. Therefore, uh, triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADF according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we conclude that AB over BC equals to DF over EF. Again, according to equation number two, AB over BC equals to DF over EF. AB equals to 2Y. BC equals to 6. Okay, AB equals to 2Y, BC equals to 6. DF equals to X according to our definition, and EF equals to Y according to our definition. So in conclusion, we found out that 2Y over 6 equals to X over Y. Here, we divided both the numerator and the denominator of this side of equation number 2 by 2. 2Y over 2 is Y, and 6 over 2 is 3. So in conclusion, we found out that Y over 3 equals to X over Y. We first multiply this equation, equation number 2. And we got that y squared equals to 3x. According to equation number 2, y squared equals to 3x. But if we focus on the right triangle, triangle DEF here, it is very easy to see that according to the Pythagoras theorem, x squared plus y squared equals to 2 squared. Okay, the right triangle, triangle DEF. According to the Pythagoras theorem, x squared plus y squared equals to 2 squared, that is 4. And we already found out that this is according to equation number 3, but according to equation number 2, we have already found out that y squared equals to 3x. So now we can substitute y squared in equation number 3 by 3x from equation number 2. We did it and we got that x squared plus y squared, that is 3x, equals to 4. Then we subtracted 4 from this equation, equation number 3, and we got that x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals to 0. So this is a quadratic equation, and the general formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for. And we will find out the value of x according to the formula of formula. x equals to minus b plus minus root of b squared plus 4 times ac over 2a. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to 1, the coefficient b equals to 2, and the coefficient c equals to minus 4. So we put the data inside the formula for x, and we found out the value of the values of x. x equals to minus b, b is free, so minus b is minus 3, plus minus root of b squared. b is free, so b squared is free squared, that is 9, minus 4 times a is 1, times c, that is minus 4 over 2a, a is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So x equals to minus 3 plus minus. Inside the root we have minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16, and 16 plus 9 is 25. So inside the root we have 25. So in conclusion, we found out that x equals to minus 3 plus minus, so root of 25 is 5. So here x equals to minus 3 plus minus, 5 over 2, so here we have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution for x is x1 equals to minus 3 minus 5 over 2. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8, and minus 8 over 2 is 4. So the, uh, minus 8 over 2 is minus 4. So we found out that x1 equals to minus 4, but because of the fact that x is a length, it is the, it is the length of side df on the right angle def, Therefore, x must be a positive number. So here, x can never be equal to minus 4. It must be a positive number. So we can set this solution, and we left only with the second solution, that x equals to minus 3 plus 5 over 2. Minus 3 plus 5 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. So we found out that x2 equals to 1. So here, x equals to 1. So I copied the right angle DFE, and we found out that cosine we found out that the cosine theta of this right triangle DEF. Here, this is the right triangle DEF. We just right now found out that x equals to 1. It is given us in the question that the cosine of D equals to 2, and this angle equals to theta. So here, in the right triangle DF, we know that cosine theta equals to DF over ED. 
cosine theta equals to d f over e d, d f equals to 1, d equals to 2, so in conclusion we found out that cosine theta equals to 1 over 2, and if cosine theta equals to 1 over 2, it means that theta itself equals to 60 degrees, if theta itself equals to 60 degrees. We finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how we found out the size of angle theta according to the second method. In the second method, here, we define this angle as alpha. So if this angle equals to alpha, we know that in the right triangle ABC, this angle equals to theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle ABC to 180 degrees. So according to our definition, this angle equals to alpha. But we already found out that this angle must be also equal to 90 degrees minus, alpha, minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in the right triangle to 180 degrees. Therefore, we can write down that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta. Then we focus on the right triangle ABC. So I copy the right triangle ABC and we define AE as A and EC also must be equal to A because of the fact that AE equals to EC. We know that BC equals to 6 units. So here AC equals to A plus A, that is 2A. B is equals to 6 units, it is given as the equation, and according to our definition, this again equals to alpha. So here, cosine alpha equals to BC over AC. BC equals to 6 units, AC equals to 2A. So in conclusion, we found out that cosine alpha equals to 6 over 2A. We divided both the numerator and the denominator of this side of the equation by 2. And we got that 6 over 2 is 3 and 2a over 2a is a. So in conclusion, we found out that cosine alpha equals to 3 over a. Here we multiplied this equation, equation number 1 by a, and then we divided by cosine alpha. And we got that a equals to 3 over cosine alpha according to equation number 1. Then we focused on the right triangle, triangle DEC. I copied the right triangle, triangle DEC in this new page. We know that d equals to 2 units, it is given as the question. dc equals to 6, it is given as the question. And ec equals to a according to our definition. So here, tangent alpha will be equal to de over ec. de equals to 2 and dc equals to a. So in conclusion, we found out that tangent alpha equals to 2 over a. But according to equation number 1, a equals to 3 over cosine alpha, so we can substitute A in equation number 2 by 3 over cosine alpha. We, we did it and we got the tangent alpha equals to 2 over A, and A is 3 over cosine alpha according to equation number 2. So in conclusion, we found out that tangent alpha equals to 2 cosine alpha over 3. And tangent alpha equals to sine alpha over cosine alpha, so we substitute the tangent alpha by sine alpha over cosine alpha. In equation number 2, we got that sine alpha over cosine alpha equals to 2 times cosine alpha over 3. We course multiply this equation and we found out that 3 times sine alpha equals to 2, uh, two, two uh, times cosine square alpha. We had that emulating identity that sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals to 1. We subtracted sine square alpha from this trigonometric identity and we got that cosine square alpha equals to 1 minus sine square alpha. Now we can substitute cosine square alpha in equation number 2 by 1 minus sine square alpha from the trigonometric identity. We did it and we got that 3 times sine alpha it is equal to 2 times cosine square alpha but cosine square alpha equals to 1 minus sine square alpha according to the trigonometric identity. So here we open the brackets on this side of equation number 2 and we got that 3 sine alpha equals to 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 1 sine square alpha equals to minus 2 times sine square alpha. 
we added two sine square alpha to this equation, we got that two sine square alpha plus three sine alpha equals to two, we subtracted two from this equation, and we found out that two sine square alpha plus three sine alpha minus two equals to zero. So here we have uh, quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to two, the coefficient b equals to three, and the coefficient c equals to minus two, and the solution to this quadratic equation is x equals to minus b, plus minus root of b square minus four times a c over two a, we found out the coefficient a, b, and c, and the variable that we are looking for in our specific quadratic equation is sinus alpha, so x equals to sinus alpha. So we put the data inside the formula for x, and we found out the value of the values of sinus alpha. x equals to sinus alpha, so if sinus, alpha, sinus alpha equals to minus b, b equals to 3, so minus b is minus 3, plus minus square root of b squared. b is 3, so b squared is 3 squared, that is 9. Minus 4 times a is 2, and c is minus 2, over 2a. a is 2, so 2a is 2 times 2, that is 4. So if we put the found out that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus minus, and inside the root we have minus 4 times 2 is minus 8, minus 8 times minus 2 is 16, and 16 plus 9 is 25. So if we put the found out that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus minus square root of 25 over 2, or square root of 25 over 4, over 4 of course, square root of 25 is 5. So we found out that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus minus 5 over 4. We have two solutions that are possible for sinus alpha. The first solution for sinus alpha is minus 3 minus 5 over 4. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Minus 8 over 4 is minus 2. So we found out that sinus alpha equals to minus 2, but because of the fact that the region of values that sinus alpha can accept is from minus 1 to plus, to, from minus 1 to plus 1, that minus 2 exceeds this range, that is to say sinus alpha can never be equal to minus 2, therefore this solution is a correct solution, so we left only with the second solution, that sinus alpha equals to minus 3 plus 5 over 2, minus 3 plus 5 is 2, and 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. So if sinus alpha equals to 1 over 2, it means that alpha itself equals to 30 degrees. And we already found out that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta, so here we can write down that alpha equals to 90 degrees minus theta, and we can substitute alpha by 30 degrees, we call alpha equals to 30 degrees. So we got that 30 degrees equals to 90 degrees minus theta. We added theta to this equation and we substitute 90 degrees, and we got that theta equals to 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, it is 60 degrees. So we found out that the size of the angle theta according to the second method, it is also equal to 60 degrees. Okay? Thank you very much.